Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Engines of Somewhere Wales. Now, before we start, I'd like to apologize for the nearly year-long hiatus between last episode and today's episode. I would have gotten it out last year, but a lack of information and me being overall more busy caused this video to get delayed, but we should be good to go for now. Anyway, last episode, we talked about the speed demon himself, Iowerf. Today, though, we'll be talking about the quirkiest looking engine, pun intended. That's right, we'll be talking about Quirk the Vertical Piston Engine. We'll discuss their coming about, her specs, her fate, her development history, and some information how she could run in real life. So, let's get over to the Kitsborough Works and dive into the story of this little unique shunter. Quirk's inception is a bit of a strange one compared to the other locomotives. Around the early 1930s at Ethanol & Sons Limited, some of the workers have been remarking about the owner of the company, Ethanol Packard, calling him senile and too old to be of any use. Ethanol wouldn't respond to these remarks by constructing an entirely new locomotive from spare parts found around the works, who would eventually become known as Quirk due to her unusual vertical cylinder design. With no real use for a kit-bashed locomotive, Ethanol would sell it off to the Somewhere Wales Railway soon after being finished when she would do light shunting due to her weak performance. Quirk is an 0 t meaning she has zero pilot wheels, four driving wheels, and zero trailing wheels. Her total length is about 15 and a half feet long, 5 feet 3 inches wide, and 8 to 9 feet tall. She weighs about 6 to 7 tons, or about 12,000 to 14,000 pounds. Quirk has a top speed of 30 studs per second, or 18 to 20 miles per hour, with a tractive effort of around 600 or so LBF, with a horsepower rating of around 32. She is equipped with the same whistle audio as Gilbert, albeit pitched up quite a lot. Here are some samples. Quirk would continue to shunt on the railway during the 1930s up until the closure of the railway, where she would be reacquired by Ethan and Sons, where she would be cosmetically restored and put into storage at the company's headquarters. Quirk has reappeared at the railway during the preservation era to honor her heritage, being one of the few locomotives in the railway to have been preserved, being mostly on static display during events from time to time, certainly standing out from the rest of the roster as the oddest looking engine to run on the railway. Quirk's life would begin quite suddenly as she was built in a mere 8 hours on either the 26th or 27th of August during 2018. No development shots of her exists, but according to Ethan, the model didn't change much up at all until the release besides adjusting the gliders and couplers. Quirk would be officially released into the game on December 9th, 2018, which was also the official launch day for Wales. Quirk's model would be relatively unchanged after this, however, physics updates to the Roblox engine would cause her to become significantly weaker than normal, causing her to not be able to run long trains or trains in general. This will be mitigated with Quirk version 2, which began development on November 3rd, 2020, and the first iteration of the model will be tested in Wales on the 5th. Due to Roblox updating the physics engine once again, Mark II Quirk became too light and thus susceptible to being pushed off curves as stated by Ethan. Quirk Mark II would officially be released in the Wales on January 6, 2021. However, this release would end a disaster, as during this time, Quirk had the same spotting issue as Gilbert, which the players quickly found out about and began complaining about. This, along with Train 1557 losing interest in Roblox, would cause them to step down from being a major dev on Wales and in Roblox in general. The spawning bug would eventually be fixed sometime during 2021, allowing Quirk to spawn indefinitely. These days, Quirk can still be seen running on the main line, and while she isn't the most powerful engine on the roster, she still does her job well. So, in this section, I normally discuss the IRL basis of an engine, but since Quirk has no IRL basis or anything even remotely close, I decided to switch this section out with an explanation how a full-scale functional replica of Quirk wouldn't work that well, and how that could be resolved. In Mark 1 of Quirk's design, there are some major issues, with the first mainly being the lack of a Valkyrie, I meaning she wouldn't be able to reverse on her own and require a push from the front to her back to move. Secondly, the bracket supporting the cylinders will not be able to handle the stresses the cylinders go through, as stated by Ethan. And third is visibility from the cab view looking out from the windows, you'd only see the back of the pistons, making it pretty hard to see from the cab looking forward. In Mark 2 of the model, these issues are mostly fixed, with the pistons now being located on the frame of the locomotive, meaning the force is distributed to the frames and the iron bridge bracket on the boiler, as stated by Ethan making the overall design more sturdy and reliable. This also allows for more visibility from the cab window since the pistons are now located on the frames. While these do help with the engine's reliability and operations, it still is one problem unsolved, being the lack of a valve gear. Even has said that if he were to construct a Mark III of Quirk, she would be equipped with a set of valves that control the input and output of steam would use slide valves to achieve that, which would allow her to operate in both forwards and backwards direction without the need for external force. However, he hasn't figured out how to implement that on Quirk's design yet, so as of now, Mark II will be the last version. Quirk's design is certainly one of the more interesting, if not complicated ones to think about from a mechanical perspective. But as she is now, she could theoretically work as a live steam model similar to the Cracker locomotives, albeit probably not as efficient as them.
Well, that just about wraps it up for this episode of Engines of Somewhere Wales. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of Engines of Somewhere Wales, even if it has been a long time since the last episode came out. Special thanks again goes out to Ethan for giving me all the info on Quirk's background and proofreading the script before recording, which helped massively to clean it up and make it more accurate. Without his help, this video would have probably not come out due to the lack of public info on her available, so again, thank you. Next time, we'll be looking at the blue tank engine that has an incredibly mysterious backstory. That's right, Thomas is up next. I'm pulling a train, said Thomas, can't you see? Where are your coaches then? Thomas looked back. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's Dylan. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a good day. I'll see you all later.